What's going on guys? It's Gillis TV. I'm finally back after a short period of time off there. Just had to deal with some things, but now I'm back. And before we get started, you've seen in the title what we're going to talk about. Just congrats to the Edmonton Oilers for winning 16 straight. They finally lost last night in the hands of the Las Vegas Golden Knights. So shout out to them, you know, just being an Oilers fan and stuff. And even a lot of people I talk to who aren't, they were keeping tabs on the Oilers, seeing if they could actually do it. They came just a game shy of tying the record and, of course, two games shy of breaking it. But now let's get into the video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more NHL and MLB content. And now with the players able to go to the Olympics, this in-season tournament we're supposedly having, that begs the question, what will this in-season Team Canada team look like? You know, we don't have the likes of Brent Seabrook anymore. Uh, Burns might not be in this conversation. You look at Jonathan Tays. Ryan Getzlaff's nowhere to be found anymore. He retired. You look at Duncan Keith. A lot of big names who were part of that 2010-2014 Olympic teams aren't playing anymore. It's the next group up in a sense when it comes to Team Canada, and like another name for sure that is going to be highly missed in this is Patrice Bergeron. That for sure will be highly missed by Team Canada. Now, I saw one guy posted what he thought. Not too sure where he got it from. It was on one of the Oilers pages on Facebook, and I kind of agree with the way they went with this. I'd probably substitute some guys out first, but the big question mark, and we all know the states have really good goaltending, Hellebuck, Ottinger, so on and so forth. What's going to be Team Canada's goaltending situation come this in-season tournament? Now, a lot of guys could step up. That is still a year or so from now before we see that. But that begs the question, who can actually play on this team? And for the first line, there's no doubt in my mind that Connor McDavid's going to run his own line. He's arguably one of the best in the world. You can put Nathan McKinnon, Kucherov in that thing. Crosby's still doing really good, but McDavid is probably going to be on a line without Crosby. I just don't see them putting those two together anytime soon. Now, on this here, they have Zach Hyman, which going after leaving Toronto, going to the Edmonton Oilers, Zach Hyman has been perfect for Connor McDavid. That guy that gets into the dirty areas, drives the net, can forecheck like no tomorrow. He, I think, could benefit Connor McDavid and himself if they take the one-two punch with them. Now, third, we are not going to the Edmonton Oilers route here and saying Ryan Nugent Hopkins. This person put Connor Bedard. Come on, the guy's pretty good. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say he's better than Connor McDavid as of right now. Possibly could be in the future, but Connor McDavid is Connor McDavid. No one's Connor McDavid at this point. Connor Bedard on the wing with Connor McDavid sounds about right. Like I said, I'm going to read you this guy's lines. So I'm going to mix and match with the players he suggested. Should make Team Canada for the in season tournament. Second line, he has Braden Point, Nathan McKinnon, and Matthew Barzell. Pretty good line, speed line there, a lot of shooting power and speed on that line. Like I said, these are I will be miss, mix and matching these lines here. Uh, third line, they got Brad Marchand and Sidney Crosby. That's a no-brainer. They've been playing everything Canada-related together for so long. You might as well just keep them together at that point. And this is kind of the surprising name, the first one, is Jonathan Marchandsall. He's been really good for Vegas. You know, he was the... Conn Smythe winner last year for Vegas after winning the cup. That is a name who I would keep in this lineup, just not particularly with Marchant and Crosby. And then third line or fourth line, sorry, they have Sam Reinhardt, Anthony Shirelli, and Mark Stone. Like I said, I'm mix and matching with extra players being Mitch Marner, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Mark Shifley, and Steven Stamkos. That's where my names are gonna come into play here. I don't see a scenario where Jonathan Marchandsall plays with Crosby or Marchant. Now, I say that because you can move a lot of guys around on this four group just using these names. I went down the Active Canada list. There's not really anyone that kind of 
pops out at me that could actually take away from any of the guys I just mentioned. Now, Mitch Marner, I could put with Sidney Crosby and Brad Marchand. I'm not taking Jonathan Marchand out. But you could put him on that fourth line with Mark Stone. Get that chemistry going. You also have Mark Shifley, Steven Stamkos, which Mark Shifley is a really good player. Him and Stamkos are good players still. I think those two kind of take the reins from uh, Sam Reinhart and Anthony Shirelli. I think those would be the extra players. Mark Shifley could go center point and Barzell if you want to move McKinnon with Crosby and Marchant. This is a lot of firepower on that line, a lot of good skill. And just seeing how Marchant plays with Pasternak, I don't think he'll have a problem playing with McKinnon at all. They do very similar things just in different ways. And I think that would benefit. And of course, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, if the Oilers do decide, to, hey, we're going on a strong playoff run. And by this time next year, when this in-season tournament happens, the Hyman McDavid Nugent Hopkins line could be intact for almost two years at that point. And you go, might as well keep them together. They got the chemistry going and whatnot for that. Now for defense, like I said, this is a whole different back end. You're used to... You know, Duncan Keith, Brent Seabrook, um, Brent Burns in this conversation. Those guys not in here. It's the next group up, and that starts with the pairing out of Colorado in Devon Tays and Kale McCarr. Like I said, or a lot of people are going to say, is Kale McCarr allowed to play? As far as I know, yes, he is because it's not IIHF. It is just a NHL thing happening which would let Kale McCart play, you know, all that. I'm not getting into details about what's going on. Then they got Josh Morrissey, Alex Petrangelo, Morgan Riley, Aaron Eklat, Drew Downey, and Noah Dobson. Noah Dobson really has emerged this year for the New York Islanders. Aaron Eklat, I would put under Noah Dobson at this point. I just don't know if he has the wherewithal to play with Morgan Riley. Morgan Riley likes to jump up a lot. Noah Dobson... Is an offensive defenseman, but knows how to stay home when needed, of course. What can we say about Drew Downey? He's, it's one of those players, just like Brad Marchant. You hate playing against, you hate him, but if he was on your team, you'd love him. That is the scenario with Drew Downey. And, of course, they had, um, I think, Darnell Nurse. I didn't get the picture yet. But Darnell Nurse was the extra name on that, who's having a really good season for them in Tenoilers. And just this win streak was a big contributor to that. Now, like I said at the top of the video, the goaltending is going to be the big question mark for Team Canada. And right now, the names are Jordan Binnington, Aiden Hill, which is playing fantastic. I think Hill could easily take, if they take three goalies, one of those three spots. Connor Ingram not having a terrible season with the Arizona Coyotes. And playing pretty good, considering it's with the Arizona Coyotes. That's as much said because they might be selling at this point, according to Elliot Freeman about an hour ago. Uh, you got Tristan Jari, Sam Montembault out of Montreal, and Stuart Skinner. A lot of young goalies in that list, not going to lie. Like I said, it is a whole different outcome compared to what we're used to. Carey Price, Roberto Luongo, Marc-Andre Fleury. If Fleury's still playing next season, his name might come up in this conversation. That's one. And they talk about how the Americans have Hellebuck, Demko, and Ottinger. So the big question mark in this in-season tournament for Team Canada is who's going to play net? Aiden Hill has been playing phenomenal. I watched the last day when he beat the Edmonton Oilers to end their winning streak. Even in the playoffs, Aiden Hill was a beast and... A lot of people are praising him because he got stuck on, I believe it was Arizona and San Jose. No one looked at him because he was on those teams and the numbers weren't great. Finally got his chance in Vegas and has taken full advantage of it. But going through the list of players that aren't named here, you know, by points wise, right? You look at Claude Giroux could be another name, John Tavares. I don't see Corey Perry being in that conversation. Jeff Carter, probably not. Brent Burns, eh. Matt Duchesne's a question mark. Tyler Sagan. Uh, you could go with a guy like Ryan O'Reilly, 
Another defenseman we didn't say that we're used to seeing wearing red and white is Chris Letang. Could he be a possible fit? So there's names like Logan Couture, Taylor Hall, Jordan Eberle, who is well known for that. I believe it was 9 uh, World Junior goal against Russia there to tie it. Or there's Jonathan Huberdeau. So there are a lot of names on this list that aren't said in this at all. But Team Canada's biggest question mark would be the goaltending. And going off that list of names who people, this guy, thought could make it. I kind of agree with him, but the lineup situation is a lot different. But that is it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Gillis TV. I'll catch you on the next one.